Hi, Karen. I'm so happy to see you for yet another mini pod. Uh, Katie, always wonderful to see you. And I love that you're in different environs. I know this is a mini pod. We don't have to get into it, but wonderful to see you. Yes, I love being in a different environment too. I am right now in o Ojai, California, which for anyone who follows me on Instagram, you're going to be like, wow, you recorded that, that that long ago? Yes, we did, people. We are recording this today on February 20th. Um, we're doing a lot of, you know, advanced recordings at the moment. And yeah, it's really nice. I have to say, Ojai is such a breath of fresh air. It is 65 degrees and sunny and there are birds chirping and there are mountains in the background and there are like, it's just, it's so lovely here. It's so quiet and it's so peaceful and the Wi-Fi is frankly shit. But outside of that, I have no complaints. I mean, shitty Wi-Fi, I feel like, is the sign of a good time. These days, like, oh, it's hard for anybody not in real life to get a hold of you. Fantastic. Exactly. It's true. It's like back to our connection episode. It's like, oh, yeah, people can't reach me. Oh, shucks. So bummed. <laughs> yes. But it's wonderful to see you in your beautiful rebellious sweatshirt. I have <sighs> not gotten one of those sweatshirts, and I think I might need to order one because that one looks beautiful. Is that a new one? It is. This is an OG one. This is really old. I don't even know. If, I don't even know where you can get these. These were on our Threadless shop, oh. rebelliousmagazine.com. You go under. I think it's. I forget what the drop down is, but you can buy Rebellious merchandise. And yes, this is a Threadless sweatshirt. I love this. It's got a pocket. It's great. Oh, that is so great. That is so so great. Well, it's amazing to be in Ohio with you, Karen, even though you're not in Ohio, but it's okay. Someday, actually, I was, that's right, because before I hit record, I was like, oh, I'm only an hour from Tanya right now. Hi, Tanya. Yes, I'm telepathically giving you a hug. Exactly, exactly, same. Yes, yes. Okay, so this topic is amazing. Like, the fact that you know what, hold on, I'm going to look at it right now, the art of Swedish death cleaning is, and by death people, we're talking about death, like life and death, Swedish death cleaning. This is an amazing topic. I can't wait to talk to you about it. Karen, take it away. Well, this is just the jumping off point. I don't know a ton about Swedish death cleaning. I've just heard of this concept of, I guess it's technically around working with elderly people, trying to get them to downsize as they enter the end of their lives. But it's taking that concept and applying it to your whole life, regardless what age you are. Like, you don't want people to have to deal with your shit after you die. You're not doing anything with it. Like, let's all downsize. Like, you don't have to be a minimalist, but I am in the midst of a downsizing journey right now. And it is top of mind for me. I think this is such a brilliant idea. I really do. I mean, it really makes me think about my in-laws. Okay, so Tyler's parents have historically moved every three years since they got married, like more than 45, 46 years ago. It's like their biggest hobby. I mean, genuinely, like it's a really, it's remarkable, honestly. And they have, you know, like moved to condos, moved to houses, built houses, moved out of houses, moved into a townhouse, but in all different states, it's just like a, something fun for them to do, apparently. I think it's really... I don't think they would ever say that like say it like that, but it is really what they do. And so in their last home, which was in Nashville, they had this enormous basement, Karen, enormous. And I will never forget walking through their basement and they were taking us through that. This is several years ago now because they've been out for a while. But anyway, they were taking us through this area and I was like, oh, what's over here? And it ha had all these like you know, stuffed animals and different things. And they're like, oh, this is Tyler's corner. And I was like, what? Like my, what are you talking? And so they were like, yeah, we've been carrying these boxes since Tyler was a kid. We've never unpacked them. We have taken them through all of our moves and we've never unpacked them. And so when they left, which I had, a lot, I was like, oh, wow, I have a lot of questions, but I didn't ask any of them at the time. Anyway, and so then we they, they left this place and they way downsized to their place now where they live in Hilton Head, South Carolina. And I mean, it is tiny. They have a really small house. I, I guess you could say house, it's like a condo. Anyway, and so they had this whole conversation over whether or not they would bring all of these boxes, not just Tyler's, it was just all of their stuff for years and years and years of collecting. And it wasn't like collecting art pieces. It was like, it was, 
I mean, it was like Tyler's graded papers from first grade, like, like that kind of stuff anyway. And so, um, so it was this whole conversation. My mother-in-law wanted to get a storage unit for all of this stuff. And my father-in-law was like, absolutely not. And so they were fighting, fighting, fighting about this. It was a very public thing. The family was talking about it, you know, weighing in, whatever. And then they moved. And ever since then, we haven't had any conversations about it at all. And I'm almost positive my mother-in-law won. And I think that's why we haven't had any conversations. And so I'm pretty sure they have a storage unit chuck full of graded papers from when Tyler was six and they just can't part with it. And like, in a lot of ways, it's very sentimental and beautiful, but in a lot of ways, it's like, oh, I mean, the death cleaning thing is real. I can imagine myself in that storage unit. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes, exactly. Oh my God. Well, I'm, I'm not even thinking about my family. Wow. You just opened a whole other Pandora's box for me in terms of my family. I'm just thinking about myself. And that story reminds me like just today, I opened my first of eight storage crates. I've been carting around for a very, very long time. And there was my magazine editing final exam from December of 2005. Oh, wow. All of my exams, in fact, all of my exams from my master's degree from 2005 are in a folder in this bin. But here's the thing. The question is, do you feel like an emotional attachment to those things? Because that's the hard thing for me is I feel emotionally attached. I mean, some of them were easy to get rid of. It's like, I haven't thought about this. I mean, I I get it why I kept it at the time. And now I've just like, I've piled that debt onto more and more versions of future me. Like I get why Karen of 2005 held on to that and moved it but like she didn't do me any favors right so <laughs> there are things in there though I will say that I do have an emotional attachment to like the exams gone the postcard I addressed to my sister from April 4th of 2005 that I never sent to her from Paris <gasps> I'll send it to her now yeah oh yeah. I love that that's beautiful mm-hmm. wow it can be hard to get rid of your shit. It really, really can. I think I have three or four boxes deep in a closet and I find them every time I take out my fake Christmas tree every year. And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to deal with that right now. Nope, not going to, no. And like, it, they're all piles. Like all of the boxes are piles of like, ex- what is it? I wanted to say expanded photographs, like blown up pictures that like are from, you know, that used to be on the walls at different apartments that I've had. And I'm like, I just can't get rid of them. And Tyler, I think because he was raised in the family he was that saves everything, he saves nothing. Like he had nothing. And it's like, okay, that is way too extreme. Like, what about your sentimentality? Like, why why would you not want to save? And and so there's a, you know, there's a happy medium, but it is hard to get rid of all your shit. Oh man, it's nearly impossible. And which is why I've been carting this stuff around all this time. And yes, you know, it's both, it's difficult just in general sentimentality and in general, all of the layers of emotion that we carry with all of these things. But then I have a loss in my family. I have now three major losses in my family. Yes. And it's like, there is stuff associated with my brother in those bins. And it's just like, it just feels like an emotional landmine. And I am trying to get ahead of it right now, right? To like start this process. But yeah, it's not, it's not fun. I mean, this is the fun bin. This is the bin with the Xena Warrior Princess folder in it. Like, this is the good one. <laughs> I love that our fun, there are fun bins and emotional landmine bins. And it's like, yeah. how do you deal with the emotional landmine bins? I mean, the only the only um, thing I can say that I feel similarly on is like, maybe it was, oh gosh, six, seven years ago. I went back to my house and I read my mom's house at the house I grew up in. And I read some of my old journals that I, that I wrote in when I was like seven or eight and it sunk me into like an actual depression for like two or three weeks when I came back to San Francisco. And I was like, okay, that I didn't have the words at the time, but what you just said is so resonant with me is that was an emotional landmine like that. And I did not throw them away. I did not throw them away. Like I, oh man. I mean, I just, I actually think about them though sometimes. And it's like that stuff, I had not read it since I was an actual child. And so like, 
it wasn't burned into my memory. Now it is. And there were yes, many pages right. that were ripped out that were actually like ripped out in between other journal entries. And I'm like, I wonder what was on that page. And then I'm like, wow, how nice that I saved myself from that page. You know, like, it's just, it's rough. It's like, it's really, really rough. It's, and I think the other thing, Karen, that I get sometimes is like, when I look back at that stuff, it's hard for me to remember that's still me. Like, that's like, it, it feels mm -hmm. like a different life. And it's like, oh no, that's actually still living inside of me. Like my seven-year-old self is still me. I mean, now we're getting really deep really fast, but like, you know, like that's just, it's still me. Like, how is that possible? And it's like, I don't want to think about stuff like that, or I don't want to think about certain events or whatever it is. And then it's like, when you go into those landmines, it's like, shit. Yeah. That's not that far under the surface in the, in reality. Yes, exactly. No, that is a really good way to put that. And I mean, I, I have done a lot of research about this. I've read the life-changing magic of tidying up. I've watched the Marie Kondo show. I follow minimalists on YouTube. I watch their decluttering videos. Like I watch professional organizers. Like I've made this an area of study and still I have like not, I'm all in preparation of doing this and it's still, it's still super hard. And Maybe I should just go back and cram. Like it's so, some of these bins are so, <laughs> right? Like, okay, like I got this master's in decluttering and I need to just go back and cram, right? Yeah. It's it's just, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to get through some of this. I will say it's so, like, it just feels so heavy. The whole process of it feels so heavy that like I started doing it in therapy. Yeah. It's really funny because I open this first bin and I find the postcard to my sister, uh, the Xena Warrior Princess folder that like is I'm never giving away ever in this life. And then this like refinance agreement, like I used to own a condo in West Harders Park and I no longer own it. And this was from my refi in 2012. Wow. I bought in 2006 and this is my refi in 2012. And I bought... You can go back in time. December of 2006 is right before the crash. Oh yeah, totally. So I'm looking at this piece of paper and I'm reading it to my therapist who also bought around the same time. She and I share a lot of real estate trauma. And I say, oh, this is for my refi. My amount owed is $128,000. And my estimated value of my property is $40,000. Oh. And she was like, keep that. <gasps> really? <laughs> But yeah, she's like, keep it to remind yourself what you want, what you've been through and what you like have gone through with this whole real estate thing and like how traumatic all this has been. And I was like, all right, you're right. But it was just like stuck in this random bin of like, oh yeah, that sucks. Wow. Wow. And it's like, that's not probably top of mind for you all the time. Like you don't remember like, or maybe it is. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it is. It is. I still have ties to that building, oh. unfortunately. And so it is. But seeing it there really was like, it really was a good, like, oh, right. I didn't imagine this trauma. Like I haven't just like created this traumatic event in my brain. Like this actually sucked really bad. And here it is written down how bad. Yes. Oh, that's so true. It's like validation. Yes, totally. Right. Oh, I love that. Is there like for you with those bins, is there like something that you want to get to in terms of like getting down to one bin or half a bin or no bins? Or is there, is that part of it for you or how is, yeah. Yes. The goal is one bin. Okay. And we'll see. I think the analogy I've been using and I will say that Ginger Buddha and Americana Angel have been very supportive in this process and Ginger Buddha is going to help me I think and MLB has offered to help like Wonderful. the analogy I've been using is like I remember my closet was just like stuffed to the gills and I just couldn't fit anything into it and then I started taking the empty hangers out of it and then suddenly I had a ton of room oh. and I feel like yeah it was crazy it was like oh so that's kind of how I feel about these bins. Like there was shit in there that like, you know, Karen of however many years ago, it was really meaningful to her. It's not meaningful to me. It's like super easy to get rid of. So there's some of that in there. And then I feel like they're the landmines mixed in. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. I actually genuinely just took a really deep breath when you explained the empty hangers. That's such a visual 
representation of the like it's like wow like all of the things that are in these bins like there are many empty hangers for you and like it's good to just identify those empty hangers not all of them are landmines like some of them are like really no okay we can get rid of that master's paper situation unless that's one of your landmines which i don't want to discount it's not a landmine it's like i feel like the categories are like empty hanger emotional landmine is on the other end of the spectrum and then in the middle it's just like oh my god that's so delightful to come across that again yes yes totally I mean this is wow this actually really is inspiring me to go back into my Christmas tree area of my you know like uh deep closet and look through that stuff because I mean, maybe I just don't need it. And like the, you know, art of tidying up, like what is bringing me joy? I can guarantee you that like looking at those bins every single year, are, it's not bringing me joy. And like, I, I don't have anything against people who have storage units because I know that there probably are real reasons to have, not real, real for everyone who has a storage unit. That is the real reason I'm not trying to judge. That already sounds judgy. Anyway, the point is, is that I wonder how many people don't want to, talk to their therapist about their emotional landmines and so therefore the storage unit industry thrives i don't know a thousand percent oh yeah you think yes absolutely i mean there's so many reasons that we hold on to stuff i mean there we call it chronic disorganization but it's hoarding and there are so many reasons why we do it yeah why we hold on to these things and yeah i mean it's been very it's been very interesting, like the stops and starts of it. I'm just going to push through it. And I would say anyone struggling with this or anyone even thinking about, like, as you're saying, like, we probably all have these boxes, these bins, these whatever somewhere, like, I'm saying this to myself too, like, we can do it. We can totally do it. It's not insurmountable. We can get through it and we'll be so much happier. We, we don't have this like trapped energy that we're carrying around. Yes. I love that. I love that. And also like we can do it. And if there's an emotional landmine, getting help to work through the emotional landmine is a great thing. Like it's like, it's okay to, and if it's not the right time to deal with the emotional landmine, that's okay too. You know, just trusting yourself. We can do it. Like you say, I love that. The good thing about having eight bins is that if this one gets to be too much, I'll just go to the next one, which I know is full of photos and I'm not touching that one. And then, okay. So maybe two bins. Oh shit. That's okay. Yeah. 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 This is this is a topic. This is really a topic. Oh my god! And we're way over what how long we said we were gonna go. But I just wanted to raise one more point, which is that we're writers, and one of the things that I have, I have an entire bin full of notebooks. I would. I'm embarrassed to say this, but out loud, but it's true. But I think I have reporters' notebooks in there from college. Wow. Yeah. When I was a reporter in college. See, that's the kind of stuff I would love to read about. Like, I, I would love to see what my notes were when I was like reporting from Michigan's capital. Like, that would be, oh my God, I would love that so much. Like, but I don't, I don't have that stuff. Actually, maybe I do. I don't know. My mom, my mom's house, she lives in the same house I grew up in and maybe she has one. I don't know. Every time I go back, I'm like, oh, there's a picture of another boyfriend that is from my past. So she might, you never know. That's interesting though. That's amazing that you have reporters notebooks. I love that. Have you looked through them? No, no. I think that might be a bin that I just tossed without looking at. It doesn't, I can't. Yeah. I don't know. That might be an empty hanger. Yeah. 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 It's great to have categories. That's really, really smart. Wow. I love this. Thank you for bringing this up, Karen. I hope all of you enjoyed it. And we'd love to hear if you feel similarly, or this is resonant with you. We will see everybody next week. (laughs) 